Hello crafty friends, welcome to the first of our Not Just Christmas in July videos. In my Facebook group and on the community page here, I asked if anyone would be interested in seeing some Christmas card videos in the month of July and overwhelmingly everyone said yes, people seem to want to get a head start on their Christmas cards this year. So throughout the month of July, I'm going to do one or two a week, not just Christmas in July videos. And I'm calling it not just Christmas in July because my aim is to make a Christmas card, a clean and simple Christmas card for you each video, but also show you how you can use the same techniques and supplies and design ideas to make other cards. So not just Christmas cards. So if the Christmas element isn't your thing this time of year, don't worry, you'll still be able to adapt the designs to other types of card. So this is my first Not Just Christmas in July Christmas card and I will show you how I made it in this video. First thing I'm going to do is create a coloured panel from which to cut my squares. And I'm going to use some colours that you probably wouldn't consider traditional Christmas colours. I'm going to use shaded lilac, although there's a bit of wilted violet on this brush still, so I've got a bit of a variegated purple. And I'm going to use broken china, which is a greeny blue, bluey green. But I think these are nice wintry colours. To add a bit of visual texture to my background here, I'm putting some shaded lilac through this circle stencil. It always reminds me of snow with its different size circles just tumbling down like that. I think we might add a little bit of broken china too. I'm only going to use a little bit of this background, but I can choose the best bits. And I'm going to spatter on some metallic paint. These are my Prima metallic accents and they're a combination of the original palette and the pastel palette. And this is a purple, sort of a lilac-y colour I guess. I'm going to spatter that on for shimmer and shine and extra visual texture. And now I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer. So in a few moments, I'm going to cut some squares out of this. But before I do, I want to add some snowflakes. I've used this aperture die to cut out these snowflakes from white card. You could use a silver card if you want, or a pearlized white card, or any colour card really. Snowflakes can be whatever colour you want them to be. I think I'll probably use this as an aperture die in a later video, so do check back for that. To glue my snowflakes down, I've put a little bit of high-tack PVA glue on the mat, spread it out with my spreader. And I'm going to add them on this panel in an arrangement that will allow me to cut out the squares the way they want them. So I'm going to use washi to hold down my square. So here are my three squares. I'm pleased with those. I cut the squares so that the circle pattern ran down horizontally. I didn't want to end up with wonky patterns. I wanted it to look all in a straight line, if you see what I mean. I've also cut a square out of white cardstock and that's going to be my sentiment but I do need to just go and print a sentiment off to die cut out because I haven't got any Merry Christmas stamps at the moment. I'm going to add these straight onto my card blank and I'm going to have them running down the left hand side of the card. And when I want to place four things, say, in a straight line like this, I'll add the first one and the last one, or the top and the bottom, or the left and the right, whichever way you want to look at it. Get those placed down, and then I'll place the other two like this, deciding on their placement to get a sort of even, even gap between them all. 
Right, I'm just going to go and print a sentiment on some white card. Okay, I've printed a sheet of sentiments here. And now I can add that in the gap that I left. You could, if you had a stamp, you could obviously stamp on this square or you could omit the square altogether and just stamp straight on the card base or card panel. To keep the card flat for posting and to add some more snowy wintry elements, I've cut some white wonky circles using this wonky circle die, which again, I think is reminiscent of snow. And I'm gonna keep my snow in this pot throughout this Christmas in July or not just Christmas in July series. So you can add a few to each square. Could even add some around the sentiment as well. I think I will add some around the sentiment just to bring in a bit of texture there. Could even cut some little circles from the leftover bits of this to bring a bit of purple around the sentiment, but that's for another card. Right, that's our first Not Just Christmas in July Christmas card finished. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. I do love this purpley, bluey colour scheme for Christmas cards. As promised, here are some non-Christmas themed cards made using the same techniques. For this one, I made the background using Tattered Rose. I just blended it on some wet card. And then I stenciled on some Kit Flamingo through this blurry text stencil. For the outline element, I die cut this flower from Smooth White Cardstock. And I stamped a thank you using Kitsch Flamingo and put my row to the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side. For this card I pulled a pink shimmery background out of my box of backgrounds and bits. I used this die to create the outline shape, the flower, stuck that on, die cut out the squares, but I also added a row of rose gold glittery washi tape for a bit of contrast because these were quite light I found and I put it in the centre. This one's not quite so clean and simple. The background is again from my box of backgrounds and bits, just a bit of purpley blended paper. I used this outline flower die to add the white cardstock outlines, stamped a with love in black ink so it was quite bold. But I did put this on a panel that I ran through my cuttle bug with an embossing folder. So I've got flowers here and a branchy leafy embossed pattern in the background. As I say, it's not quite as clean and simple because of this embossing, but I think that adds a nice layer of texture. So if you want to make something a little bit less clean and simple, a embossing in the background is a good way to go. And lastly, here's a fun one. Again, this was from my box of backgrounds and bits and that I made in one of my ink pad 101 videos. I used my splat dies to cut out some white cardstock splats which I stuck on and then die cut out with a square and then I added a sending love sentiment in black again so it pops amongst all that bright colour. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you will join me for the rest of the Not Just Christmas in July card videos. If Christmas in July isn't your thing, then there will still be lots of other card videos this month, including some more 6x6 paper pad videos and some My Top 10 videos. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.